Welcome guys, this is Swift Soul Eater Guide. For those who want to know about Spec Soul Eater, you can check out the previous video that I have. Then let's get started. Okay, let me talk about the rough characteristic first. So for Soul Eater, about the tankiness, her HP coefficient is 2.1 and her armor is 95%. So this is considered low tier when it comes to tankiness, but she's still higher than Sharpshooter and Gunslinger Reaper kind of you know groups. The spec build that I mentioned in the last video is a burst class. On the other hand, this build is consistent build that uses crit and swift. So unlike the spec build, the DPS proportion is distributed to a lot more skills. This build does not run entropy as a gear set, but around half of the skills have back attack. So even if it's not an entropy class, it's better to back attack to get additional crit rate and damage. Okay, this time let me talk about her identity and her class engraving. You remember that on the last video, when I was talking about the spec build, whenever you use the green and purple skill, it increased the stone, the identity stone and the meter at the same time, right? And also whenever you want to use the pink skill, which was the DPS skill, uh, you had to consume each stone. But unlike the spec build, for swift build, Whenever you use the green and purple skill, it does increases the stone, but it does not increases the meter like this. Yep. And it does not consume any stone whenever you use the pink skill. But it does increases the meter. Only the pink skill increases the meter. By the way, this meter decreases over the time. If I try to show you, you can see that the meter is falling. Another option that this class engraving gives is that it increases the damage of the purple skills and pink skills by 40% all the time. You remember that when I used the pink skill, it only gave few amount of the gauge, right? Just like this. This is exactly 10% of the entire gauge, but there is a way to get more gauge. And also you can enhance the damage of the pink skill by another 50% damage. How you do it is, you use the pink skill after gathering the three full stones. So you use the green or purple skill to gather the full stone like this. And when you use any pink skill, then it will give me 30% of the identity meter instead of 10%, and it will do additional 50% more damage like that. You can tell that it consumed all the three stones. So normally the pink skill should not consume the stone, but only when you have all three stones, it enhances the skill by consuming all the stones. Okay, this time let me show you what happens if you reach the full meter. So when you get the full meter, then it automatically puts you into ghost mode for 12 seconds. It's not like you press Z key to activate it. You're forced to go into this state when you reach the full meter. Let me show you. So let's pretend that I have full stone and let's try to reach the full meter. Then what happens is that you cannot use any pink skill even if I reset the cooldown like this. And the damage of all your purple skills increases by 120% and cooldown reduction decreases by 40%. Attack speed increases by 20, movement speed by 10% and your resource restoration like mana kind of stuff increases by 300%. So you kind of get the idea of this class engraving, right? When you go into a ghost mode, your purple skills becomes really strong. And not just that, when you're out of the ghost mode, uh, because you can enhance the pink skills, the pink skills also have big amount of DPS proportion. So all those skills are really important. And that's why I explained earlier that the DPS is you know distributed to a lot of skills. So it's a consistent DPS class. Okay, this time let me talk about the gears and stats. For the gear, you go for a Nightmare. And for the stats, you max the crit and sub swiftness. With this build, you get around 60 to 65% crit from your crit stats, and 5% from Adrenaline level 1, and 10% from back attacking. So it's around 75 to 80% crit. When it comes to the movement speed, you get around 10% from the swift stat. 19.2% from this certain tripod, which I'm going to explain later. And you get 12% from the Swamp of Yearning level 3 from the supporter. So that's already 40% cap. And you can overcap it when you go into the ghost mode because, as I said earlier, ghost mode provides you 10% of movement speed. 
And because of this, Raid Captain is one of the core engravings that you want to go for. With that being said, let me go over to the engravings. You want to run Class Engraving, Raid Captain, and Grudge. Keen Blunt is also one of the core engraving because as I told you, this build has around 75 to 80% crit rate, so it suits well with Keen Blunt. And for others, you want to run Curse Stall level 3 and Adrenaline level 1. For 5 times 3, you can just get rid of the Adrenaline. And technically, you can replace the Curse Stall with Mass Increase if you want to. Okay, this time let me go over to the skills. The first skill is called Harvest. This skill is a DPS skill and has level 1 destruction. For the tripod, the first one reduces cooldown, second one increases crit rate and damage, and last one increases damage as well. For the rune, you want to run Quick Recharge. The next skill is called Lunartic Edge. This skill is a back attack and it gives you a party synergy and also the movement speed buff as well. For the party synergy, the soul eater has 6% damage and this tripod applies the party synergy for 10 seconds. The second one increases the movement speed by 19.2% for 8 seconds and the last one increases damage. For the rune, you want to run Judgment. Even if you don't land the skill, it gives you the movement speed buff. And if you land it, it applies the party synergy debuff as well up here. By the way, I'm running level 7 cooldown gem on all the skills right now. And with this much swiftness, if you use this skill, the cooldown starts from 6 seconds. So theoretically, you can have infinite uptime for the party synergy and also for the movement speed buff. The next skill is called Lust Nail. This is a counter skill. For the first tripod, you go for the cooldown reduction, and the second one gives you tenacity. For the rune, you run either Purify Rune or Bleed Rune. The next skill is called Ritual Spinning. This is a back attack skill that is a DPS skill, and it has a decent stagger as well. For the tripod, the first one increases crit damage, second one increases damage, and third one increases damage as well. For the rune, you want to run Gale Wind. The next skill is called Soul Drain. This skill is not a DPS skill, but it gives a lot of stone meter. The first tripod reduces the mana consumption, second one increases damage, and third one increases the stone meter and crit damage. For the rune, you want to go for a conviction rune. The next skill is called Vestige. This skill is a DPS skill and it has level 1 destruction. It has a decent stagger as well. For the tripod, mana consumption reduction, and this tripod turns this skill into a charging skill and increases damage as well. And last one allows this skill to stack up to 2 and increases damage as well. For the rune, you want to run Gale Wind, the purple one. The next skill is called Soul Sinners. This skill is a DPS skill that has a decent stagger and is a back attack skill. For the tripod, you want to run Tenacity increases damage, and also increases damage. For the rune, you want to run Legendary Gale Wind. The next skill is called Guillotine Swing. This is a DPS skill that has a level 1 destruction and has a decent stagger. For the tripod, you want to run this one that increases the stagger, and this one increases the damage and reduces the cooldown by 4 seconds, and last one increases damage. For the rune, you want to run Legendary Overwhelm. For the Awakening, I already talked about this in detail a lot in the previous video. So TLDR, the first Awakening increases the stone meter, and the second Awakening is stronger than the first one, but this one doesn't increase the meter, so pick the one that you want to go for. If I show you, the second one looks like this. 
and the first one looks like this. You can see that all the three stones are maxed out. If you see the tripods that I maxed out on each of the skills so far, it's only 17. For the rest of the one, honestly, there's no importance, so you can just leave it as 17. When it comes to the priority of maxing out the tripods, try to important on all the skills except for this skill, this green skill right here called Soul Drain, because these two tripods are DPS tripods, but this skill is not a DPS skill, that's why. This time, let me go over to the gems. For the gems, you want to run 5 attack gems and 6 cooldown reduction gems. For the attack gems, you want to run 3 on these 3 pink skills and 2 on these 2 skills, Harvest and Ritual Spinning. So basically 5 DPS skills. For the cooldown gem, you want to run 5 of them on the 5 DPS skill that I mentioned previously. And the last one, you want to run it on this skill called Lunartic Edge that provides the party synergy and also the movement speed buff for yourself. Lastly, about the rotation. There are a lot of things you have to consider. You need to line up the conviction and judgment, and you need to use the DPS skills before the movement speed buff runs out because of raid captain efficiency, and you need to know which pink skill you want to enhance it, and also which skills you want to use it during the ghost mode, and which ones you want to use it not in the ghost mode, and on top of everything, the thing that makes it really hard is the fact that the cooldown of all the skills are different. So there is a specific way to do the rotation and it looks like this. By the way, I refer to a Korean site called Inven where a guy made a research about this. So shout out to him and there's a link in the description below. In the non-ghost mode, you proc the conviction judgment. By the way, this judgment skill has party synergy and self movement speed buff as well, right? Then you proc awakening to proc the nightmare and then use the harvest. Then by the time this happens, you will have three full stone so you can enhance this guillotine swing. This pink skill is the strongest pink skill out of all the pink skills. So you enhance this and get 30% meter. And then you use this skill called soul sinners right away, even though it's not enhanced and just take 10% meter from it. And then on the second line, you do the rotation like this. And by the time you use this second vestige, because this skill can be saved up to two stacks, it will be enhanced. So you use the enhanced vestige. So from here, the first one, you get 10% meter. From here, you get another 30%. And do the third line rotation like this. And by the time you use this skill soul drain, you can enhance the guillotine swing again. So you get 30% meter from here and use the sinners again to get 10%. By the time you use this last pink skill, you will go to the ghost mode. You might ask, aren't you using too many times of the pink skills? It's already over 100% meter gain. If you think so, then you forgot about the fact that the meter decreases naturally. I've said this you know, before in the early video here. So that's the reason why you have to use more pink skills than you think. Anyways, when you go into the ghost mode, you do the rotation like this. This skill right here, R skill, is the strongest purple skill among all the purple skill. It's called Ritual Spinning. And make sure not to make a mistake of using this skill twice during the non-ghost. Because if you use more than once, then the cooldown of this skill will not come back by the time the ghost mode happen. Then you will lose a lot of DPS. Since you will not be able to land two times of this skill during the ghost mode if that happens. After you finish the last skill in the ghost mode, you just have to repeat from the non-ghost mode from here. So that's it. This time, let me show you the rotation.
Okay, that's all for today. I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys liked it, then please hit the sub because that would help me a lot. Stay Giga Chat. Bye bye, guys.